Hello dear and welcome to this tutorial. I'm so happy to really welcome all of you to this hands-on ethical hacking training. And um, if you really have a passion in cybersecurity, especially the offensive aspect of cybersec, uh, want to be seen as a penetration tester, someone with the skill set to detect weaknesses or vulnerabilities in IT systems, be it computer network, be it system servers, applications, websites, etc., and be able to recommend the appropriate safeguards in order to remedy these vulnerabilities, then this course is for you. However, I want to also mention that if you don't have certain knowledge already, you are going to struggle coping with this tutorial. This is going to be hands-on ethical hacking training and so you need to have a knowledge of computer networking. You need to have a knowledge of Windows Active Directory. You need to have a working knowledge of Linux. So at least how to navigate the Linux file system, how to mount, how to install software in Linux operating system. If you don't have this knowledge already, I will suggest you have to take this training with us first. Uh, computer networking, you need to understand IP addressing, you need to understand subnetting, LAN switching technologies like VLAN, trunking, spanning tree, etc. You also need to know what DSCP service is, what is useful, DNS, routing, etc. So those are the knowledge you need to have under your belt already before you can enroll for this class. This is going to be a very hands-on training and we're going to walk you through the labs where we set up the tools we'll be using for this class. Now let's take a look at what we are going to cover in this training. So we start off with introduction to ethical hacking. And in this particular introduction to ethical hacking, of course we are going to cover what ethical hacking is and how is ethical hacking different from hacking. So they are totally different. And um, as an ethical hacker, you can actually earn income hacking ethically for companies, for your clients, etc. We're also going to look at the law enforcement aspect of ethical hacking. We must abide by the rules of engagement. All right. So what are those rules of engagement? What are those certifications we can have under our belts as an ethical hacker as we try to get engagement from some companies and try to help them to detect vulnerabilities in the IT systems and recommend appropriate safeguards that they need to implement to uh, fix these vulnerabilities. So all of those will be discussed under the introduction to ethical hacking. And then we'll take it a step further to information gathering. So under the information gathering part of this course, we are going to cover all of this. So we'll look at footprinting as well as reconnaissance. We'll look at scanning and how we can scan a target system, a target network, etc. And then we'll take it a step further to system hacking. So under system hacking, we're going to perform vulnerability scanning. Either we use OpenVAS or we use Nezos to scan a Windows 7 operating system and see if there is any vulnerability that exists in that OS. And if there is any, we can use that existing vulnerability to see how we can break into that Windows 7 machine because of the vulnerability that is found in there. Okay, in that same system hacking section, we're going to look at malware threats. We're going to see what malware are and what are the uh, countermeasures that we need to put in place to protect our IT systems from malicious codes or malicious software, which is known as malware for short. We'll take it a, a step further and see how malware can be created and how we can do some sandboxes, some, do some analysis on this malware to see how many antivirus solutions are able to detect the malware. And then we'll move to the packet sniffing of the course. So we'll be using tools like BetaCap, EtaCap, etc. to see how can sniff traffic that are passing through a given network, be it a LAN, local area network, or wireless local area network, aka Wi-Fi. So we can sniff traffic, we can analyze these traffic, and part of the content of these traffic sniffs could also be sensitive information like usernames and passwords. 
We look at social engineering. One of the many ways that hackers break into secure systems today is via social engineering. Example of a social engineering attack is phishing. So how can we detect social engineering attacks? Uh, what are the tools that are used to implement these attacks? So look at all of this and we look at countermeasure, things we need to do in our IT environment to protect our staffs, our users from falling victim to social engineering attack. And then we look at denial of service. So when attackers are not able to break into your IT systems, they might want to crash the system. That is denying the system of a valuable service that the system is providing to your authenticated and legitimate users. So imagine your web server is down, then people will no longer be able to visit your website. Maybe it's an e-commerce website where people go there and do some shopping. For that amount of time that the website is down, your company is going to keep on losing money, right? So that is denial of service attack. Uh, how is this kind of attack implemented? And what are the safeguards that we need to put in place to protect our servers, our IT systems from being down by the threat actors? And then we look at session hijacking. Here, uh, session hijacking is a very popular way that attackers can use to break into your account today. They could steal your session cookies. Uh, so in this part of session hijacking, we are going to cover exactly what session cookies are, why do we need the cookies, where they are stored in our systems, and what we actually need to do to protect the cookies from being hijacked. Um, actually, when the cookies are stolen, they could be used to hijack our session. Now we'll see how to create a malware that can evade uh, some firewall solutions. Uh, firewalls here, we're looking at antivirus programs. So how can we make a malware undetected? And um, actually, we also see what we need to do to harden our systems so that this kind of malware will not have a way to get into our IT environment. We look at application hacking, website hacking, how to detect vulnerabilities in web applications. Uh, so here we'll be setting up some vulnerable web servers like Metasploitable 2, as well as the OWASP broken web application. So we are going to use that to hone our skills of websites and web application hacking. We also look at SQL injection attacks. Um, SQL injection attack will carry it out using vonweb.com website and see how we can detect SQL injection vulnerability in a database application like MySQL and what we need to do to fix it. And lastly, in this training, we are going to cover network hacking. Um, we'll be focusing on wireless and we'll be testing different wireless security standards, wireless security protocols like WPA, WPA2, WEP, and then push button authentication. All of this will be tested in this section of ethical hacking. And we must talk about cryptography in this course. So look at the concept of that. Um, we basically be looking at the symmetric encryption. We we'll look at asymmetric encryptions and other algorithms that are used in modern day cryptography. So cryptographic basics, very, very important in this course. And this actually is a high level overview of what we are going to cover in this ethical hacking hands-on training. Thank you so very much for this video and then see you in the next video.